David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. I have a bit of a queue of reviews I've committed to produce, but it's been a while since I've reviewed a pen from my personal collection. I have a few pens that I need to eventually get around to reviewing, so I thought I would let viewers decide what would fill this weekend's slot. Around 800 people voted, and the clear winner was the Namiki Emperor. So that is what I will be talking about today. Uh, this is a pen I ordered near the beginning of this year from Goldspot Pens back in February, and it was on back order at that time, uh, and I received it six months later at the end of July. Uh, that's not too bad of a wait for this pen. Sometimes the wait can be up to a year for the Emperors. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Namiki Emperor, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for, I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Uh, back in 1918, the Pilot Pen Company was founded by two gentlemen, Masao Wada and Ryosuke Namiki. The company was originally named the Namiki Manufacturing Company, but early on it was changed to Pilot as they expanded globally into Western and European markets. Uh, in 1924, Namiki was founded as an artisan offspring of Pilot. Uh, the company began by making pens from ebonite, but the problem with raw ebonite is that it will change color and lose some of its shine and luster over time. In order to solve this issue, Namiki began using Arushi lacquer to coat their pens. This way, it would create an attractive body and deterioration of the ebonite was limited. During that time, luxury pens in Western countries often decorated the metal bodies of the pens with elaborate designs carved into the metal. So in order to compete in the global market, Namiki started to create macchie designs on their pens in order to make their pens stand out. Over the years, there have been pens in all price ranges under the Namiki umbrella, but Pilot has actually moved kind of standard priced pens such as the Falcon under Pilot in order to reserve the Namiki name for higher end artisan pens such as the one we'll be looking at today, the Emperor. Uh, it does arrive in this rather large box, and just to mix things up again, uh, I wanted to show you a bit of the unboxing experience of this pen. So in order to see what's in this box, please join me over here at camera two. So here is the box. You know what, I'm gonna put it sideways just so you can look at the entire box. Uh, it's a very nice soft wood, uh, the kind found with mini pens from Asia. Uh, I also like this tasseled cord. The purple looks rather regal. Uh, you know, I even like the fixtures on the side of the box there that hold the cord. Those look kind of cool as well. So we go ahead and undo the tassel here and the lid lifts off and inside we have a number of things. We have a pilot use and care guide. There is a product registration card. There is a Namiki use and care guide. Uh, and then there is another set of instructions. I'm not sure if this was included by Namiki or the retailer. And then finally, we have a very large polishing cloth, which is nice. Uh, it's pretty much a square foot. It's just a, a very decent sized and uh, nice polishing cloth. Then you remove this padding to finally reveal the pen. And that in here, we have a couple of different things. We have the pen nestled in this bed of velvet. Uh, and then there is a bottle of Namiki blue ink. Uh, and then inside this box here is a, let me get it out here, a nice glass eyedropper. Since this is an eyedropper pen uh, that util utilizes an eyedropper me filling mechanism. And speaking of the pen, here it is. This is the Namiki Emperor. Let me go ahead and get this out of the way. This is the Vermilion model. Uh, the very first thing one notices about this pen is the size. It is enormous. Uh, it is very much an oversized pen. Uh, while it is indeed large, the Emperor is not overly heavy. Uh, this was a pen I had my eye on for a number of years. Uh, at pen shows, I would pick one up and uh, try it out and just to get the feeling of it in my hand. And the main question I always had was if this pen would be too large. And I'll discuss more about my feelings about that here in just a little bit. 
Uh, the emperor is made from ebonite and covered in a vermilion arushi lacquer. Uh, vermilion is a bright red pigment that they add to the arushi lacquer. Uh, with the naked eye, this looks like a treatment that could be applied by a machine, but up close under magnification you can actually make out the brush strokes used to apply this arushi. It is a classic cigar shape. Uh, the end of the cap is rounded and the cap angles up slightly until about this point where it straightens out. Uh, there is no cap band uh, and it has a rounded step down to the barrel uh, which is straight until about this point where it tapers down to a rounded end. Uh, the clip is gold plated on it. Let's see how close I can get here. On it, it says Namiki. Can we get that in focus? If I can get that right in the camera. On it, it says Namiki, uh, which is the only exterior branding on this pen. And then the serial number for this pen is actually on the top of the clip here. Um, I feel that this clip is an appropriate size for this pen. Uh, and that, uh, you know, aesthetically, I think it looks nice. And then surprising enough, the pen does fit comfortably in a standard breast pocket. I took this pen to work with me today and I carry it around in my pocket all day. Uh, and this does fit in a pocket comfortably. The cap unscrews to reveal the highlight of the Emperor, which is this remarkable looking number 50 sized 18 karat gold nib. Uh, to begin with, this nib is simply stunning. Um, I like how the silhouette of J Mount, uh, Japan's Mount Fuji is incorporated into the nib. Uh, then below that is the Namiki polygon shaped logo. Uh, this nib is available in fine, medium, and broad. Um, I'll show some size comparisons in a bit, but this by far is the largest nib in my collection. Uh, even though it is large, you'll see in the writing sample that this nib actually writes and feels just like a standard number six nib. Uh, it's kind of incredible. It's not overly cumbersome or too bouncy. It's pretty much perfect. And here's a look at the extraordinarily cool red lacquered ebonite feed. Um, I love the low profile of ebonite feeds, uh, and this red really matches the look of the rest of the pen. The section begins with a flare and is plenty long enough to accommodate a variety of grip styles. Uh, the threads are not sharp or uncomfortable, so it's fine if your grip rests on them. Uh, needless to say, but this pen is certainly long enough to use unposted. But believe it or not, the cap does indeed post. Uh, and there is actually a, let's see if we can see it in here, there is an actual felt lining inside of the cap. I'm not quite sure if you can see it in there, but there's a bit of a felt lining inside of the cap so that if you do choose to cap this pen, it will not scratch the Arushi barrel. Uh, but I really can't see how someone in their right mind would want to post this pen. Um, while the pen is very large, it's not overly heavy. And I, I wouldn't necessarily say that the, having the pen posted back weights it considerably or throws off the balance, but it's just really a bit unwieldy and kind of comically large. Uh, and for the size of the pen, I would actually say it's rather light. One of the remarkable things about this pen is how comfortable it is in the hand. Now, I like large pens, and this one doesn't feel too large or out of place in my hand. I've written a large number of letters with this pen, and I have really found it to remain comfortable even for those extended writing sessions. Uh, I took a trip out to California a couple of months ago and used the flight time to catch up a bit on my letter writing. And this was the pen I used. Uh, I'm certain the person sitting next to me was thinking to themselves, what on earth is this guy writing with? First of all, this is in the digital age. First of all, to see someone writing letters next to you is kind of odd enough. Uh, and I have a feeling that right after the flight, they were telling their friends, you know, hey, you'll never guess what I saw on the plane. A man was writing letters by hand with a comically large red pen with a metal thingy on the end. He goes, I'm not quite sure what it was. Well, that's at least what I imagined. Uh, this is an eyedropper pen. You actually unscrew the section here and you use that accompanying eyedropper to fill this pen with the ink of your choice. And then you seal it back up. 
Uh, when you run out of ink in the section, there's kind of a forward section here, and then there's the main ink chamber here in the back, which is very generous. When you run out of ink in the front, all you do is twist the piston knob, which suddenly appears, and let it sit here just for a second to allow some ink to go into the forward section. And then you close this off. Uh, it's very easy to use. Also, the tolerances are very tight on the piston knob here. Uh, you know, in the bright light, maybe you could make that out, uh, but in normal use, no one would even know it's there. It's very well crafted. Now, this is a serious pen which comes at a serious price. Uh, the retail price for the Namiki Emperor is $2,000. Now, this is the entry-level Emperor, uh, the budget model, if you will. Uh, there are intricate Mackie models which sell for the tens of thousands of dollars. And to be honest with you, I'm really not into a lot of the fancy Mackie work. This pen right here suits me just fine. Uh, it is attention grabbing. I feel the looks, look, the looks are stunning and the writing experience it provides is superb. So it is truly a pen worthy of the Emperor title. So now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. go with some size comparisons for the Namiki Emperor. It barely fits in the frame there. So I decided that I should probably compare it to some of my other large pens in my collection. Uh, here it is with a Danny Trito Genkai. Uh, and then here it is with a Pilot Custom Arushi. These pens are so large, I have to kind of split them up when I'm showing them. Uh, let's see, here it is with a, a Wall Eversharp Deco Band. Uh, and then here it is with an ASC Bologna Arco. You can see it, you know, this Bologna Arco is a huge pen, and this pen pretty much dwarfs it. Then here it is with a Classic Pens LB5 and a Mont Blanc 149. In regard to some uncapped comparisons, here it is with a Pelican M1000, which is one of the larger nibs physically in my collection. Uh, then here it is with a Pilot Custom Arushi, and this is Pilot's number 30 nib. So you can see the difference here between the number 30 nib and the number 50 nib. So uh, you can see the difference between those. Let's actually get a little closer here. So you can see the difference between the 30 and the larger 50. Then also here it is with the ASC Bologna Extra Arco. In regard to a writing sample, we have the Namiki Emperor. This is a medium 18 karat gold nib, and the ink that I'm using today is Franklin Christoph. Arushi Red. This is what the ink looks like. Uh, that uh, It's a nice red that I think matches well with a lot of Arushi pens. Uh, this is what it looks like in regard to Pilot Aroshizuku Bishimaton. Uh, and then also something relatively new out of their Sweet Life collection, which is Monteverde's Cherry Danish, which kind of has that same tone to it, maybe slightly darker. Uh, this is what the smaller bottle looks like. This is uh, one of, yeah, they, the, the Franklin Christoph inks come in uh, a larger and a smaller bottle, and this is the smaller of the two. And in regard to the rest of the writing sample,
just barely fit. Uh, this nib is spectacular. Uh, I, I have no complaints about this nib whatsoever. It's kind of remarkable that a nib so large can be so usable. Um, I had mentioned it before, but when you're writing with it, it really just feels like you're writing with just a standard number six nib. It's not insanely bouncing or overly cumbersome or anything like that. It's just amazing. This has quickly turned into one of my very favorite uh, nibs in my collection. In regard to reverse writing, Well, it really doesn't do well with the reverse writing, but that's quite all right. And in regard to some fast writing, the feed has no issue in keeping up whatsoever. Okay, so there we have the Namiki Emperor. Uh, this pen has quickly turned into one of my favorite pens in my collection and one of my favorite purchases of this past year. So if you're able to ever get your hands on one of these, I would strongly recommend it. So until next time, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later.